Well, why are we shooting Morgan? Why? He's a, he's a nasty, evil, bad man. Why tell his story? Morgan, because he was so bad, there were so many things written about him and so many people contributed at the time to papers and books and manuscripts about their encounter with Morgan. Now, other bushrangers, like when we were shooting John Dunn, finding information on him was very difficult. But when you look for Morgan and you go to the Trove, people contributed news articles that anybody who'd met him and survived the occasion probably wanted to contribute. You know, there's that um, information that came from the policeman who caught him in 1854, or was with a party of police who caught him in 1854. So Morgan was such a big, big character. He, his story had to be told. Oh yeah, I mean, he, he had an absolutely outstanding, wicked sense of humour. And the story you're talking about is when he holds up the drain near Winton and he there's an old Italian guy and the old Italian guy is petrified and Morgan realises that he is genuinely a very poor man. So he gives him a pound and says, here, here, have a pound. And then he goes on to the next dray and he says to the wagoner, you know, and his wife bursts into tears when she realises they've best been held up by Morgan, of all people. And he says to her, don't put yourself out, woman, and hands her a pound. You know, he, he just had such a great sense of humour about the way he used to deal with people, but he was a violent person as well. That's right, a, a coach went past with the pays for all the road workers that were working, obviously, in the other direction to where Morgan was, and it had 500 pounds on it. And so they, um, yeah, they uh, were quite amazed that Morgan was handing out pound notes to the wagoners and 500 pounds just from the other way. <laughs> so, yeah. But the other funny part of this story is the uh, story about when he holds up the coach and uh, the young lady is uh, kind of clever enough to keep her money. And Morgan goes up to her, and he's, he's held up the coach and uh, he's demanded money from everybody. He walks up to this young lady and he says to her, you got any money? And she says, yes, I've got some pound and some silver, Morgan. And he says, but he says, yeah, that's right. She says, I'm a poor woman. And uh, Morgan turns around and says, I'm a poor man, and he's a hard time, so I hand it over. <laughs> so, um, you know, but the, 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 the wagon drives off, and the wagon, um, what do they call him, um, coach driver, is, you know, trotting along. And the young lady says, do you think we'll see Morgan again tonight? And the driver says, no, probably not. She said, can we stop? And uh, the uh, wagon driver says, the, wagon, the coach driver says, why? And she says, I got my foot on my money and she placed the money on the footstep of the coach um, whilst Morgan was rifling through the mail. And the, and the wagon driver's thinking to himself, that took some presence of mind to do that in front of Morgan because if you got caught, you certainly would have been shot. And the other funny part of that story is the wagon driver sitting there while Morgan's going through all the mail on the ground and the wagon driver's sitting there and he's, his team of horses are a bit flighty and he's got his foot on the brake and he's sitting there trying to control his horses and he's looking over his shoulder and he sees Morgan going through all the mail. And he thinks to himself, what I wouldn't do to have a pistol. I'd make myself a thousand pounds tonight without any problem at all, because Morgan had 1,100 pound bounty on his head. And he's thinking, oh gee, I could do with a pistol. And then he looks down and he thinks to himself, what if I miss? Geez, if you miss Morgan, it's not gonna go well. What if the pistol misfires? He reconciles himself that he's really glad he doesn't have a pistol that night because the consequences of having a pistol would have been, yeah, not good. I think his, his sense of humour, even in dark times, was indicative of the Australian character at that time, wasn't it? Absolutely. And when you read the, the stories that were contributed by all the different um, letters we recollected, the Australian sense of humour of, you know, even in the darkest of times, shines through. And it's unfortunate, but I think... Our modern world has lost that dry sense of humour. It's like when the coach turns up and they uh, say, you're late. And uh, he said, yes. And he said, you were held up, weren't you? And he goes, yeah, how did you know? And he said, we heard the rifle, the pistol shots, or the shots fire out. And he said, well, why didn't someone come out to see what's going on and give me a hand? And they said, are you kidding? We're not risking our lives for some government mailbags. You know, <laughs> in fact, this guy was being shot at was beside the point. The mailbags was where they were most concerned and they weren't going to go save them. So you know, it was just... That dry sense of humour, and Hall was renowned to have the same sort of dry sense of humour. Um, but yeah, that seems to have been lost. Um, after Smythe, he then goes back to Victoria via over the Murray, 
Now, that, at that time, and this is an interesting point, is the Victorian government so worried about the bush rangers operating in this area. And when you think about it, Morgan operated from Albury to Wagga, and then just north of Wagga is Gundagai, and Ben Hall operated from Gundagai to Bathurst, and they reigned that area completely, right? So, and then north of Bathurst, all the way to the Queensland border and into Queensland was Frederick Ward. So it all operated from 1860-something to 1865 when the Felons Apprehension Act was implemented and they managed to wind them all up. But for that period of about five years, no mail went through this district with anything valuable on it because it never got to the other end. The bush rangers for sure would have picked off, you know, cash and jewellery and all that sort of stuff. So the police in Victoria, or the government in Victoria, got so concerned that they sent their best policemen and their best, best horses and they well equipped them and they patrol the southern side of the Murray River to make sure none of these bush rangers crossed over. They were so concerned and they did such a good job of it. But Morgan, being Morgan, found a place where the police couldn't patrol very easily through the area. And he steals the horses in the middle of the night and he sneaks around and then he makes a public appearance, or deliberately makes a public appearance and he sends a message back to the Victorian government and the fancy Victorian police, as he called them, that he's here and he'll stay long enough so they can get their blood money. And then he goes down to Whitfield and tries to find Evans and Bond, right, who shot him about five years earlier or four years earlier with duck shot and he goes to get reward on them. And, but fortunately for them, they're not there. And then he goes back to Winton, has a meal. Next morning, holds up those drays, hands out some cash, and then heads up towards Peach Alba where the final scene will be. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a fascinating, but still convinced this Morgan actually did come here and would operate, operate it off these off ranges, has to.